Hello and welcome to the CSF Rheumatology Author Into Podcast. My name is Professor Peter Nash from the Griffith University in beautiful downtown Brisbane. Today, I'm very fortunate to be joined by our international colleague, Professor Yoshi Tanaka, well known to all rheumatologists around the world, Professor and Chairman of the Department of Internal Medicine at the University of Occupational and Environmental Health in Kitakayushu in Japan. Welcome, Yoshi. Great to have a chance to talk to you today. Today, we'll be talking about uh, Yoshi's recently published paper, Modern Rheumatology, which is looking at Filgotinib, a novel JAK1 preferential inhibitor, in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. And this is an overview on all the clinical trial program, looking at efficacy and safety, the Darwin program, the Finch program, and discussing a little bit about uh, the JAK1 selectivity of this agent. Before we get started, Yoshi, can I ask you how you are going and how the COVID has affected your rheumatology practice? Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Peter, for giving me a wonderful opportunity and introduction. So, yes, please. Yeah. So, um, how has COVID affected your practice in Japan? Uh, now we are suffered from the fourth wave of COVID-19, so by the mutated virus. So especially this region, uh, the number of the patients are gradually or uh, rapidly increase up. So from two weeks ago, we have a, uh, got a statement of emergencies from country and also uh, from the prefectures. And have you been able to be vaccinated yet? I'm sorry? Have you been vaccinated? But vaccinated, had the vaccine injected? Oh, yes, yes, we did. I did. I did okay. once a month ago. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> uh, but by the second injection, I got a high fever. Ah, 38.5 yeah. degree. <laughs> That means a good response. So yeah, you will be I, hope, I hope so too. Can you tell me what the market is like in Japan for the JAK inhibitors? Have they been taken up very well? Yeah. Now in Japan, five JAK inhibitors are available. Uh, Tofacitinib, Baricitinib, Pefisitinib, Batastim and Felgotinib. And the market size might be uh, maybe greater than uh, 50,000 patients with RA are uh, now treated by JAK inhibitors. And does any one of them have most of the market share or are they all equally distributed? Um, I'm sorry, I cannot hear you well. Sorry. Do they all share the market or is one preferred in the Japanese market? Uh, no, uh, maybe Tofa and Bari are marketed very well. Uh, in Japan, after the one year after the uh, launch, uh, we have a restrict to prescribe only for two weeks. So now, Pefi, Upa, and uh, Fergotten are the, such a, under the, such a regulation. So we can't prescribe only four two weeks. But from this May, this re restriction is released in case of Upa Okay, yeah. Because in our country, they have decided not to market Philgo. So tell us a little bit about the study that you've done? How did you perform this particular study? Okay. Uh, as I mentioned recently, development of the treatment of RA has been the event of JAK inhibitors, a new class of uh, targeted synthetic DMAS, TS DMAS, a small molecules uh, targeted uh, inhibits the JAK uh, signaling dependent enzyme 
in turn blocks the intercellular signal transduction downstream of a number of cytokines and uh, important factors. So JAK inhibitors are potentially rapid onset of efficacy or oral administration and absence of immunogenicity. But disadvantage uh, remain in an increased risk of infection and, and many uh, long-term assessment of the such safety issues remain unclear. Tell us about how you performed this study. Yes, uh, we have uh, now, uh, in terms of filgotinib, this is the first JAK inhibitors in our country. Uh, we have to summarize the efficacy and safety issue of filgotinib by comparing to other uh, four JAK inhibitors. Uh, because in, usually in one hospital, only three drugs with similar efficacy and similar indications are available. So if Hirugotinib is a good one, better than others, we, it will be uh, approved in the, our hospital, but if not, it cannot be. So uh, the special characteristic or uh, uh, such a setting point is very important for us. So let's talk about that um, selectivity. Tell us a bit about how Filgotinib is Jack one selectivity. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Tell us how filgotinib is JAK1 selective. I see. By pharmacokinetic analysis, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, pharmacodynamic analysis, uh, filgotinib was first identified, identified as a JAK1-2 inhibitor by the biochemical assay. But... Uh, now it is designated as JAK1 inhibitor because uh, the selectivity towards JAK1 uh, shown by the IC50 of 12 micromolar and which are much, much smaller than other JAK2, TIC2, and JAK3 inhibition. And also uh, by the start phosphorylation assay, confirmed that filgotinib inhibit that phosphorylation pathway just depend upon the JAK1 containing JAK heterodimer more than others. So now this is known as a JAK1 selective inhibitor. Okay. Can you tell us a bit about the pharmacokinetics, about the metabolism of the JAK1 inhibitor? Yeah. So, uh, the, the, the peak plasma concentration reached at two, using two to three hours, and half-life is about five to six hours. So uh, also the special characteristic of hirgotinib is just, it is uh, changed to the active metabolite just after the oral administration. So, the uh, 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 steady state PK data from healthy volunteer aged 40 to 50 years old showed that over 24 hours, the mean amounts of hirugotinib and its active metabolite excreted in the urine were equivalent to about eight, uh, 34%. So, so that is a special characteristic of this drug. So for instance, before the use of the filgotin, we have to check EGFR. If, if EGFR is between more than, greater than 60, we can use, for instance, 200 milligram filgotin. But if uh, EGFR is between 15 to 60, we have to dose down to 100 milligram per day. But if less than 50, we should not use filgotin. Okay. And tell us a little bit about the efficacy that you found in your review. 
Okay. Uh, in our review, uh, we have summarized three phase two study and four phase three study. Uh, Darwin one and Darwin two are treated in patient with MTX inadequate response to MTX, MTX IR with placebo plus MTX in Darwin one study and monotherapy in Darwin two study. And Darwin three is a long-term extension of Darwin one and Darwin two. And each one, two, three study, uh, the phase three study, uh, MTX IR patients are enrolled in Finch one and biological DMAD IR was enrolled in Finch two and MTX knife are in Finch three. And Finch four is a long-term extension of Finch one, two, three studies. And uh, in Finch one studies, uh, uh, in addition to uh, 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 compared to placebo and uh, also adalimumab, pirugotinib 100 or 200 milligram regimen were uh, uh, superior to these competitors uh, in terms of ACR 20 and 50 and 70 at week 12, which means uh, Filgotenev met the primary endpoint. And Finch 2 studies, uh, this was evaluated the use of Filgotenev in combination with CSD mod in patient with prior biological DMAD IR. So again, uh, Pilgotems was superior to placebo, uh, Asia 20, 50, 70 at week 12 or 24. But most important one is that uh, uh, subgroup analysis showed the efficacy of Pilgotem was not affected by the number of prior biological DMAD. And also it does not, uh, uh, the efficacy was similar in patients who were exposed to IL-6 inhibitors or TNF inhibitors or uh, abatacept. In, uh, in Finch 3 studies, MTX9 patients were enrolled. So HR20, at week 24 was not met, but Asia 50 and 70 were superior in filgotinib group more than uh, MTX monotherapies. Thus, uh, filgotinib uh, appears to be superior to placebo in patients with MTX IR, biolog biological edema IR, and MTX naive patient. Also in phase one study, uh, Filgotem uh, tended to better than Adalimumab, at least Asia 20, 50, and 70 at week 12. So, Finch 1 was an important study. It seemed to have very high placebo rate. Is that a problem? Yes, that's right. Uh, Maybe it depends on the region of the studies and also uh, some condition of the study or background of the studies. But uh, even though uh, placebo uh, HR20 or 50 and 70 of placebo arms are high, uh, uh, teams was superior, significantly superior to placebo in these primary endpoints. And from your review, would you recommend, if renal function is normal, that we use the 200 or the 100, which was most effective? Yes. Uh, in terms of uh, efficacy, especially HR20 and 70 response, uh, it is not significantly different, but uh, 200 milligram uh, tend to better than 
100 milligram. In terms of structural change by radiographic assessment, uh, much difference uh, of not observed between 100 and 200 milligram. And also uh, compared to other limb map. Uh, in terms of safety, uh, 200 and 100 milligrams are very similar or comparable. So from this point, if EGFR is greater than 60, uh, 200 milligram of filgotinib is optimal dose for patients with RA. Okay, and would you recommend monotherapy or combination therapy with methotrexate? Yes, basically uh, combination therapy are recommended in patients with CSD mod IR or biological D mod IR or MTX naive. However, in patients who cannot use MTX, monotherapy can be available. So, for instance, uh, in Darwin two study, and also uh, uh, some of Finch one to three studies, monotherapy uh, worked very well. So, if patient cannot use MTX, uh, monotherapy can be recommended. But so optimal. I'm sorry. So you mentioned safety. Tell us a little bit about the safety of your gotinib compared okay. to the other jack. Uh, the safety is an important issue in jack inhibitors. Uh, even though this is oral, orally available drug, we have to do uh, um, screening and monitoring before and during the use of any JAK inhibitors. So in terms of incidence of TEA, a treatment emergent adverse event of hydrocotinib 100 to 200 milligram was generally comparable with that of placebo and also uh, adalimumab. Also, we observed low incidence of serious adverse events also adverse event leading to discontinuation. Uh, uh, also important one is uh, sh serious infectious events. This is also lower. Uh, regarding opportunistic infections, the 52 week incidence was uh, only zero uh, 100 patients a year for 100 and 200 milligram regimens. And as treated to incidence was 0 0.3 and 0 0.1 per 100 patient a year respectively for the two diseases, two, two doses. Also the importance well, is the incidence of herpes zoster. That was also 1.2, about one to two per 100 patient a year. So, uh, which was uh, similar to uh, the incidence of adalimumab and MTX. Herpes zoster uh, is herpes, also... Sorry, herpes zoster is a very important issue in Japan and Asia. Yes, that's right. If that's you right. analyze the Japanese patients in the studies who are at higher risk, was yes. the rate still low? Yeah, yeah. As Peter mentioned, on um, the pre incidence of the herpes zoster in Japanese patients treated with any JAK inhibitors are uh, about six to nine per hundred patient a year. However, in patient in Japanese patient treated with filgotinib, the incidence was about one per hundred patient a year. So, uh, also I think, I, uh, I feel that the uh, occurrence of fecal herpes zosters are very low in Japan. I really so realize that. That's important. Does Japan have zoster vaccination? With no. 
In uh, I don't think so because a single X was approved in Japan last year, but only a few patients are vaccinated by single X. So the majority of the patients are not vaccinated yet. So uh, this might be, a, uh, we need to have more information or more supported evidence, but fugitive might be a little bit different from other jack inhibitors. Jack inhibitors. Given the recent oral surveillance study with tofacitinib, can you tell us about MACE, BTE, malignancy, please? Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, the, the incidence of malignancies are uh, also uh, almost comparable to the incidence of azalimab in case of hirugotinib, 100 and 200 milligram by the uh, extension studies. In terms of uh, uh, MACE, uh, major adverse cardiovascular event, that was also 0.6 and 0.3 per 100 patient year in 100 or 200 milligram frigotin respectively, which were very similar to that of adalimumab and MTX. In terms of VTE, venous, thrombo venous thromboembolism, was also 0.1 to 0.2 per 100 patient year, which may be lower than adalimumab or MTX. That's uh, safety issues are a little bit different from other JAK inhibitors. But one serious concern or, or one point is maybe uh, 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 imperial spermat spermatogenesis and histopathological change in the testes and the epidemics. Uh, that was claimed by uh, FDA in United States. So now uh, it is under the investigation by Manta study and Manta race studies in the United States. Very good. I've seen a press release that says that the sperm count was lower in the placebo group than the filgotinib group. So fingers crossed it's not a major issue, but I don't think anybody knows if it's reversible or not. That's the key I would suggest. The other thing interesting, Phil Gottlieb didn't seem to affect lymphocytes or NK cells like the other JAK can do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, um, but if we go to, uh, uh, as you mentioned, frequently induce an increase in neutrophil counts. I'm, I'm sorry. Decrease in, neutrophil, decrease in neutrophil counts and lymphocyte count and in, in neutrophil counts. However, we do, did not see observe the uh, reduction in lymphocyte count and NK cell count, which are also different from other JAK inhibitors especially to that, that, that might be important for opportunist infection risk. So that, that's a nice finding. Um, yeah, I think so, so. So can you tell us um, a little bit about other diseases that Phil Gottlieb is being studied in? It, is it being studied in uh, inflammatory bowel disease and et cetera? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure in the uh, information in detail, but as far as I know, uh, as you mentioned, Phrygotinib is now under the clinical trial in patients with infect inflammatory bowel disease and uh, uh, allergic, dermatitis, allergic dermatitis and uh, uh, also Psoriatic arthritis. You know, yeah, psoriatic arthritis. And yeah. angst pond as well. Okay. So finally, your take home message about Pilgotnib for the practicing clinician. How would you yeah. summarize the findings of your study? 
him. Uh, similar to other jack inhibitors, filigotinib has a good efficacy in patients with MTX naive, MTX IR, and also biological demand IR. But the difference might be, a, I, I'm sorry, uh, before the safety. Also, the important point is uh, recently diffuse to treat RA, T2T RAs are emerging. So by the Finch, Finch 2 studies, pyrigotinib works very well, even in patients who are uh, treated by prior more than two or equal to um, biological demons. And that implies pyrigotinib may be good even for the patient with D2T RA. That might be a setting point of filigotinib, which is similar to vadastin. In terms of safety issues, it is very characteristic because AE adverse event, serious adverse event, the infectious event appears to be lower than others. The important point is that the incidence of herpes zoster and VT in the mace are maybe much lower than other JAK inhibitors. That is a setting point in the safety issue. And that maybe depends on the JAK1 uh, dependency is much higher than JAK2 or TIC2 or JAK2 homodimer dependent pathways compared to other JAK inhibitors. So finally, the optimal dose is 200 mg. That uh, active, met the importance is that filigotinib can be divided, ch changed to the active metabolite rapidly. The majority of active metabolite are secreted by urine. So before the use of filigotinib, we have to check EGFR. Depending on the EGFR, we have to adjust the dose of filigotinib, or sometimes, or if EGFR is less than 15, we may avoid using filigotinib. In terms of long-term uh, safety issues, it is under the investigation, but I hope it works well. So thank you very much. Uh, we'd love to um, thank you for your time today. Um, looks very interesting that this might have safety benefits, and yet in our country and in America, it's got uh, sort of rejections based on unknown safety when it could be the exact opposite if people look at the data very carefully. Um, and we'd like to thank you for your time today. We wonder in the future if uh, things were uh, generic and cheaper, whether you might start with a jack inhibitor yeah. before me. That's in the future, Yoshi. So yeah. this has been the CSF Author Interview Podcast. If you'd like to know more about this paper and others uploaded to the CSF website this month, detailed slide sets are available in the publication section at cytokinesignaling.com. Please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast from. Give us some feedback. Let us know what you think and rate us in the iTunes store. Thank you very much for your time, Yoshi. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much.